Hi guys, thanks for joining us today on Tuesday Training Podcast. Uh, today we are welcoming Dr. Kyle Naylor, chiropractor at Lifetime King of Prussia here in Pennsylvania and my co-worker. Uh, Dr. Kyle, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no, honored. As I said, I'm, I'm super stoked that we're on number two, right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So early bird. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just trying to get it started. Like I said, we're going to go uh, just talk about some passions, talk about uh, what you're going to, what, what you want to get into, everything sure. like that. Uh, 25, 30 minutes max. Let's just have some fun with yeah, this, okay? Let's so do it. Why don't you cool. tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, as you said, I'm a chiropractor and uh, went to Palmer West Campus out in uh, Silicon Valley. Super stoked to actually go out there because um, I just wanted to, just the connections, right? The, the opportunity out there, um, super cool. Better and, than uh, now, too, with the whole yes, uh, yeah, 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 quarantine yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, and uh, uh, but anyway, so a chiropractor by trade, though I like to mm-hmm. say, um, just because I kind of look at myself as more of a movement provider and a movement coach overall, because um, you know I use my adjustments, my soft tissue exercise. They're all tools to me, you know. Nice. Um, so I, I like putting that on the table, just because you know whether there's a you know, you know. Pers- preconceived you know notion of what a chiropractor is and what they do and stuff like that there's definitely different ways of right. practicing for sure right. um, so yeah um, but and plus fitness is such a huge background in my life mm-hmm. so I'll just make a long story short here because this can be a long story in <laughs> oh, yeah. itself um, it's just how I got into chiropractic care um, when I was young when I was 12 years old I was actually diagnosed with Crohn's disease so it's an really? autoimmune disease yeah yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. um, you know you'll get um, just ulcers and stuff through your intestines all that good stuff uh you know it's a blast let me tell you oh okay. <laughs> yeah it sounds fantastic yeah yeah and at the time it was it was definitely a curse mm-hmm. but um i will say it's a gift it's a blessing now and i say that because there's no way i would be as into health and, and it wouldn't be my passion i don't think you know if it that didn't lead me down that road That's awesome. um so yeah so i would say that got me into it where at a young age i had to start looking at okay what i ate you know taking mm-hmm. care of myself fitness wise I, I played sports growing up baseball and basketball being my two main ones but um you know i looked into more okay how can i prime my body though for sport not just playing it and getting just stronger to hit the ball farther kind of thing right. you know um and then uh then once i entered into college i kind of met this bodybuilder kid i mean Let's be honest. He was a he was a goalie on a soccer team, but he was like benching 400 pounds easy. So, hear that soccer athlete? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, listen, I was a mate. I mean, just ridiculous how agile he should have been a running back. I believe. It. Um, but yeah, so he got me into it, and um, I mean, changed my life and just brought fitness into it, and that's where I just fell in love with like what you could possibly do with the body. Um, mm-hmm. But the Crohn's steps into the point where when I was, you know, I was diagnosed at 12, when I was 16 years old, that's when I was just like, I can't take this anymore. I'm not going to let this, you know, run my life. I need to dictate. I need to control my life. So by like 17, 17 and a half, um, I was flare up issue free and I haven't had an issue since. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So over a decade, no issues. Uh, weaned my myself off medication, you know, I was supposed to take four pills three times a day for the rest of my life. I don't do that anymore. You wow. Know? Um, and I, I do pat myself on the back for that, mm-hmm. but not in the sense where it's like, you know, toot my own horn kind of thing. Right. But I say because it's, it took hard about it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, and But I, I think it's just like, I like to use it to show people that like with hard work, with dedication, with, mm-hmm. with education and knowledge and managing yourself, you can do, you can do a world of difference. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, and that led me down the path of just health and chiropractic care gave me the broader scope. Mm-hmm. Of being able to help people with not just movement, but also you know nutrition recommendations, just really what I need to lifestyle factors, all that good stuff. Um, so that's how I sit here now. <laughs> that's pretty. Right. That's yeah. pretty cool. I always I always go back and say like if I if it if I was my coach back when I was in like high school or college, one I don't think I would have torn my uh, rotator cuff in high school, <laughs> which ended my illustrious MLB career. But um, <laughs> yeah. God, I, yeah, that close. It was very close, very close. <laughs> so close. Yeah. Um, but I, I would have just been given more guidance, and I think that's something that the youth of this uh, this um, athletic population doesn't have uh, yeah. yet. Mm-hmm. I, I say that because I really hope strength and conditioning infiltrates the high school level at a more structured in a more structured, structured. way. Because right now there's not a whole lot of structure. And kudos to all those out there that are actually like doing good things with high school programs. But 
you see these YouTube videos, these fail videos, these deadlift videos of yeah. 13, 14, 15 year old kids not knowing what they're doing, not giving any right. structure. It's just, hey, there's weight. Like, if you can pick it up, you're the strongest on the team. Well, your your rep that your deadlift rep that takes 25 seconds twisting and turning like uh, Peter Griffin on Family Guy. Um, like, you're you're running down the wrong rabbit hole, and you're not creating guidance for these kids to become a better athlete and yeah. get there. So that's kind of, I I always want to like use the high school athlete as a blank slate like hey let's get them yeah. better to make it easier on the college strength coaches so that they when they, then they get to the pros they at least have an idea of what they're doing they can create their own workouts they don't have to ask ask pinterest or ask instagram like okay what what should i do that now? usually leads them down the oh, that, rabbit hole. Oh, <laughs> terrible well, that's why you, you do it and I, th- I think in generations to come we'll be there mm-hmm. you know because at as much as like I love working with the kids that I have in the clinic um, because like you said working from scratch and I, I tell them you know they're they're playing ball now and you know I remember looking back and they're where I was like playing double headers baseball right now and I'm just like if I had just this core base education of movement and how to take care of yourself right I mean back then you know you would sprain ankle you would get hurt what would you do you'd ice up and you'd literally just lie on a couch for yeah. two weeks until you felt good to come back yeah. to play it's a horrible idea yeah it's a horrible idea you know especially it's now nuts. like what I, yeah um could you imagine if yeah. we had the bodies that we had when we were kids how resilient yeah the human body is like under the age of 12 oh for sure could you imagine that as an athlete fall or as trees an adult? And you're okay yeah just like who if you fall if i fall out of a tree now i'm not gonna be okay no <laughs> there's no oh my no God. shot yeah, so I, I, there are days where I just struggle walking upstairs. Granted, it's a it's a bigger leg day. It, it, it is a leg day. Yeah. I'm done with the one by twenty. I'm done with the one by twenty. Thank you. That was good. I like that video. Oh, that was good. Nuts. That was just that's all mentality though. Never again. You know? I, I don't want to ever do that again. It was that's fun. what you say. But a year fun. from now, you're like, you're gonna be like, yeah, I think I can throw no, another five no, pounds no, on. No, no, no. Not <laughs> three hundred by twenty was yeah. plenty. If you guys have not seen that video, you gotta go watch that video. <laughs> thank you. I love how your wife just hypes you up. She, I think she was. I would. She was I definitely so much more stoked than you were. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. You were too. Was so I was so happy to be finally done with it. And it was funny too yeah. because I did it the next day. The quarantine hit, shut everything down. I was like, oh, oh that perfect was timing. Right before yep. that, it was literally the day before. Oh wow. It might have been two, three days, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I did it. I got it done. And anyway, I needed you right after because yeah. I couldn't move for a yeah. long time. Oh, I'm sure. So I needed your back cracking. Everything. Right. I might well, get one thing. after this too. Yeah, it was so. kids too, right? I mean, it's like you you want to teach good motion. It's good for them to have the the education, but it's also they do beat themselves up. And to be honest with you, I tell like, listen, as a movement provider, mm-hmm. I tell patients, I like yeah, I, I tell patients, I am here so you can treat your body like an amusement park because that is life. That is part of yeah. living. I'm not going to tell you to stop doing something. Mm -hmm. I'll help you make modifications. I'll help you reach your goal to get there so, you know, you're not backtracking and taking steps backwards and doing things that are wrong for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm never going to tell you to stop moving because that's what it's for. I mean, it's just, yeah. I agree. Uh, Same thing. I have a client that um, loves to go golf and golfs three, four times a week. Um, But as of late, he uh, started getting just a little bit of low back pain. Um, and we started working with, I started working with a little bit, like what's firing, what, how he's, I looked at not the golf game because the golf game is what he likes. Yeah. Like I looked at his stress levels, day in and day out, what he's doing at work, like, and just kind of making sure that those things aren't affecting the golf game. It turns out they were, but like yeah. you go golfing 18 holes four, uh, Sounds four good. times a week, but that takes a toll. He's got to be retired. <laughs> okay, so he's also older um, too. <laughs> so um, he he has a little little side job that he does enjoy, yeah. but it is a little on the stressful side. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, the majority of it is yeah. uh, golfing, and which I can't blame him for. Golfing is amazing, oh, yeah. but that's a lot of holes of golf. That's a lot of just being in a bent over position. That's yeah. more often more more than anything, it's rotation. And what's his recovery? You know, probably just relaxing, having a beer yeah, after yeah, after yeah. eighteen with <laughs> <Yes>. boys. <laughs> so. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. So we, we had to look at that a little bit, but that comes into play, like being able to rotate the spine, being able to move, and like you said, you're a movement provider. Mm-hmm. I, I'm stealing this straight from Kelly Strat, and I don't care because I think he's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I want to be able to provide my clients, my members, whatever, with movement choices. Yeah. And I really like that term so, a lot. I'll uh, I'll jump in with one of Gray Cooks the way he put mm-hmm. it, and um, and I love it because. When somebody comes in to, to my office, when you're you know consulting with someone, you have to look at two different things and ask them the question before you do anything else, which is one, do they want independence or do they want performance? Because that's gonna that's really gonna change your type of care on what are you doing with indivi- this individual? You know, like if they want, and regardless, I think there still needs to be a level of independence, mm-hmm. and I think that's why you know working with kids is so crucial. Because if they have that independence, like you said, they, they have that self-management, and self-care, so you don't have someone every second of the day holding their hand and they can make better choices for the future. But um, when he said that, I was like, that's perfect. Because if you're teaching someone independence, exactly what you did with his golf game, you looked beyond the movement, you went into his lifestyle factors, which is a lot of times what you want. Right. You, know, um, you need to look at recovery, you need to look at nutrition, things like that. When you're looking at performance, it, you're gonna look at lifestyle factors too, but it's not more really about the education at that point. It becomes in getting stuff done and then you just directing them mm-hmm. to accomplish a certain goal. Like you know, so so the way you, you work what, with somebody. What, for, uh, what yeah. road do you take in the yeah. fork? Because okay. in order to be optimal, right? I mean, you can't sit there and explain you know, to your patient all the time if they're focusing on performance on, well, you know, this is what you need to do when your low back's tight in the morning or something. No, you come see me. We need to focus, you know, if your low back's tight, that means you can't train that day. Now you need to come see me. We need to work it out so you mm-hmm. can train, you yeah. know, kind of thing. So yeah. You're um, basically taking the reins of their performance yeah. and their lifestyle yeah. and making sure like get uh, over time, give them the reins back. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, there I needs like to that. be that extra step of you taking a little bit more control because again, a percent matters. Mm-hmm. A day of not training matters. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know? A day of no so, movement yeah. matters. Um, well, awesome. That means uh, so that brings me to my next point. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's say my let's say my golfer comes to you, okay. and sixty some sixty some years old, sixty five, sixty six. Yeah. I got a little back pain when I go golfing. Like what do like he wants independence. Yeah. What what do, what's the first thing or two? What do you screen him with? Like how do you test either his rotation, his spinal flexion, extension? Like what what do you look at? Yeah, so um, well, I think the first thing, is, as I mentioned to you earlier, is just looking at their facial expressions. Mm-hmm. I love so that's why now, especially with everyone wearing a mask, cool. I hate it. Yeah, I hate it. Um, not for health purposes, mind you. Yeah. Um, however, of it's course. just like yeah, reading people. Um, I've gotten, you know, I've definitely gotten good at that, mm-hmm. and you know, with having to do it with my job. Um, but it makes such a big difference because I can tell someone coming in, this sixty-year-old. One, maybe, you know, he was an athlete growing up and he has a high pain tolerance and maybe that allows me to, you know, treat him with a little bit more assertiveness or aggression to get him back a little bit sooner or push him a little bit further, you know, because his tolerance is maybe a little bit better. Whereas if he's coming in and maybe he's kind of walking on eggshells, he, you know, his pain's not so high, but he's super timid in the way he moves. Because it's not about the actual physical movement at that point, it's more so about the mentality. Because the, a lot of times, your body can hold out on certain things, but if you're, you know, going to be timid, if psychologically you are afraid and fe- fearful, you're going to compensate. And so a lot of times, it more so just to get them to accomplish that physical state, mm-hmm. you need to accomplish and overcome that mental fear first in order to get to there. So that's one of the biggest things. And then assessing someone. Um, as you mentioned earlier to breathing, I mean, breathing is one of the biggest things just because, I mean, that's going to lead into your basic stability. Um, and a lot of times when I work with somebody, I, I look at the foundational movements first mm-hmm. because you know, as well as I do, when somebody comes in with pain, unless it was, you know, trauma, it's going to be dysfunction that happened over years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it I takes like, a long time to yeah, comp- make them a compensator. Exactly. So I like s- just starting with that basic foundational movement patterns Mm -hmm. and then if I'm thinking to myself okay well there's no discomfort there's no pain then I'm going to move on to bigger and better things so a good example is if he comes in we're going to do you know flexion extension we'll do rotation we'll see how his glutes fire we'll see you know how the core activates Mm -hmm. all that good stuff yep 
and then we'll see like rotation in his hips, right? So that just that basic stuff. We're gonna clear all that stuff up first. Mm -hmm. He's gonna need to learn how to activate his core. You know, utilize. You know, people sometimes don't like the word activate, but I would say I like the word. My favorite word is utilize. Like, cause I think I like prime. Prime. Okay. Yeah. Prime. So everybody, because everybody can activate if you tell them to. Yeah. But it's a matter of utilizing it when you need to, kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the the word I like to use. But um. Okay. But yeah, once you get that basic foundation of him learning what it feels like, because I tell my patients, you're gonna walk out of here with two things, and you need to. One is education for future self-management. The other is body awareness. I like it. And with that body awareness, that's the foundation. After you get that foundation, then we can move up to golfing those patterns, you know, more dynamic, gross movement kind of thing. So, yeah, start small, simple, move into big I'll, I'll send them to you next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, now, absolutely. I just want to branch off a little bit, yeah. kind of go, not off topic, but uh, continue. Like, what are some of the things that intrigue you? So yeah. what are some of the things that, like, you're on your way to work or you're on your drive home from work? Like, what do you think about, like, that could Ooh. either change the world yeah. or change the way people around you? Like, uh, just yeah. Change. So what, what do you think about? It is funny because, like, when you asked me that earlier, I was like, hmm, what, you know, what really comes to mind? You ask me now, though, immediately, it was, it's human behavior. Mm -hmm. I have a huge knack and enjoyment for learning that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because in the state we're in anyway, listen, you can have the most education. You can be the smartest person you want to be. And I learned a lot of this for myself, and I use it for myself, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. However, I love helping people change lives and, and realize, you know, it started with my change and my passion of helping people overcome their pain, their limitations, their struggles, looking at things as challenges, not necessarily blocks or obstacles in the way and trying to overcome them. It makes you better. How do you get your clients to do the same thing? Because you want to make people excel and push. So human behavior is the biggest thing. Like how do you get somebody to build a habit? It's, you know? it, it's a long daunting process is what it's, it is. It's exhausting. It's, like, it's, absolutely it's the same, it's the same thing. Like I love seeing people work hard. I love tr like physically pushing my body to its limits and seeing yeah. what I'm truly capable of. Clearly not a lot of other people have that yeah. drive to yeah. do so or else we wouldn't have the obese ep epidemic We would have yes, the yes. nation today <laughs> um, I was actually having a conversation with my wife this afternoon um, we <laughs> I feel bad saying this, but I give like The obese people of the world a lot of credit for just doing what they do on a regular basis yeah. because that's tough I can't imagine yeah. being obese. Yeah I can't imagine doing it. Now, granted, don't get me wrong. They they should get the help. They should go outside. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not that hard to go outside and walk. Yeah. Treat your body with respect, with the food that you eat, everything along those lines. But um, that is, a, you, I completely agree. The yeah. human behavior plays a large role in why I do what I do in the fitness world, being For a sure. fitness professional and training my body to be as, give myself as many movement choices as, yeah. as choices. it can. Well, that's true. I mean, but and I love that you say choices because it's it's not even just movement choices. Like to me, I, I was thinking the other the other day, I put to I did a whole patio by myself, mm -hmm. twenty one by seventeen. I had some help, you know, doing mm -hmm. it. But um, but as far as like digging, picking up the grass, like lifting these twenty four by twenty four, these these like cement pavers, it was it was like three ten hour days in a row. Mm -hmm. And I it was so exhausting. But the one thing that never crossed my mind was will my body be able to hold out oh yeah the only thing that crossed my mind is well shit this might not be level um <laughs> are we gonna be steady sideways like is maybe this... i should have hired someone. <laughs> so, so you know i'd rather that stuff go mm -hmm. wrong though but it was such uh, a joy in just realizing that i know my body was strong but that gives me choices to enjoy my life and capabilities Cap 100 percent capability um i have a good good story for you there was this uh i always my friends um probably don't like me as much uh, sometimes when I try and change their habits, right? Fair. Yeah. So, um, I can, I, my wife does that too. Yeah, so. and sorry, people, sorry Maggie. Yeah, right. Well, people I'm close to, I just, I, I feel, you know, I, I just want them around for a long time. I want them to, to make the best choices, you know. So this, my one roommate back in college, just would eat horrible, he was just gaining weight fast. Um, just he would just play video games, be on the computer, be super stressed with school. There's just a lot of bad negative stressors going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I told him I was like, 
what what if you like just cleaned up your diet a little bit or if you just spent 30 minutes going for a walk here or there and um he said why would i do i don't want to do that why would i want to do that and waste my time doing something i don't like mm-hmm. and so to that a year you know a couple years later i finally came up with an answer because if you take care of yourself you can enjoy the that stuff that fun stuff a heck of a lot longer you know if you don't take care of your health if you don't take care i'll put it this way there's a i have a few patients they're business owners um you know ceos are are retired now they have a lot of money but guess what they also have a lot of health issues oh yeah and they're only 50. oh my god so you know we kind of always search for these things that um you know whether it be money we always search for these things that give us pleasure but if you know if you don't have a healthy foundation I don't, I don't, in my eyes, I don't care how much you want to enjoy it, Yeah. you won't be able to enjoy it as much or as long. Because they don't have the choice anymore. Yeah. I eat ice cream all the time. It's one of my favorite things to do. Ice cream is awesome. And I eat it all the time. Nice. I won't, I won't shy away from that. If that takes a few years off my life, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. But not if it's going to make me, you know, carry around, you know, if turn me into a diabetic or, right. or put weight on where I can't go take a run or you know What's do the moderation like factor everything exactly. besides smoking everything yeah. is good everything is okay yeah. in moderation exactly besides smoking smoking yeah. it depends on where you're smoking right <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right awesome thank you so much for no. sharing all that information Absolutely, dude. i got yeah, this fun. two questions Uh-oh. to end on okay they're thought-provoking oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> If you were to listen to my, uh, the first one I did, you uh, know, I would have been, I been ready. It's so, better I'm not ready. Yeah, you know? it's true. It's much better than I All right. You're sitting at a dinner table with three empty chairs. Mm. Anyone ever, alive or dead, whoever you want, who's sitting there at dinner with you? Who are you talking to? Ooh. This is just any dinner. Any. Okay. It's not my last dinner. No, 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 no. It's just <laughs> think you're going to Morton's for steak dinner and so, it's like, um, expensive. One of them's... Elon Musk. Uh, that, <laughs> I agree. That That's guy's a good one. mind is just, he thinks of things way beyond mm-hmm. our comprehension. I yeah. wholeheartedly agree. And, um, Great choice. Yeah. So that would be one of them. Um, I think the other one, this this one I'm, I'm torn to between the two. Okay. But it have to be Kobe or Michael Jordan. I, I would also. After seeing the last dance, I kind of, we kind of, we all kind of got a little bit of taste of Michael, but yeah. I wouldn't mind. I think it's just Kobe's reign a little bit now. Yeah, yeah. In I retrospect. think it's just because it's like that winning mentality. We all want to think we have it, yeah. and, and I think we do to some extent. Not to but the extent, not to the extent yeah. of yeah, and, and that's like it's to different. the extent of sacrificing family, yourself, mm-hmm. friends, right? Like that's hard to do, really hard to do. Agreed. Um, and, uh, I don't know if I have a third one, dude. We should go Michael and Kobe. <laughs> I could do Michael and Kobe. Yeah, you know what? Well, yeah. Throw them both out there. Let them argue. Let them yeah. argue actually, about who gets you the final shot. Actually, I, I'll do another one for I do, um, uh, I like Gary V. Gary V. Okay. He's, I don't know, I just listen to a lot of his stuff, mm-hmm. and he's, it's I like stuff. his perspective. Yeah. He brings a lot of, like, stupid, simple perspective we just don't think about. Okay. You know, sure. just like, you know, we, you know, I think he's, it's like a three billion, whatever chance of you actually becoming a human. Wow. So it's like, why, why would you waste any time not being happy? Huh? I like that. Right. It's like a Very stupid, cool. simple thing. Like, yeah, if you don't really look at your chances, cause you've already taken for granted that you're a human. I don't know. So yeah, no, I love it. mindset. I love it. You're just gonna have to bring some airplugs. Cause he's a loud shouter. He is a loud shouter. <laughs> um, and the very last question, I'll give you the choice. All right best or worst advice you've ever gotten Ooh. you know what worst advice mm-hmm. just rest yeah i actually uh i can't stand that mm-hmm. um and because and it doesn't even have to be with movement even when it came to you know uh having Crohn's disease and flare-ups i think just rest mentality or it puts in your mind that you just have to wait. I think it's more of a mentality thing than a physical thing. So you're, you're so you're not. Let me clear this up. You're not yeah. saying 
just wait around. You're saying like, like active, pe- active rest. Be produ- productive with rest. Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Be productive. And productive, it doesn't mean that you, know, you could be active rest, you just go for a walk. Or it could be rest, educate yourself. Like read I think, yeah, read a book. I just feel like maybe it's not specifically rest, but it's like, oh, just, you know, just hang in there or something. Or okay. just, you know, um, you know, take two or three weeks off. Or I just feel like there's always something we could do more to make ourselves better whether it's mentally or physically, and I think rest in the uh, fitness and therapy world is one of the worst things, but then I, and I think the same thing in even just the functional medicine aspect where I rested. I would just sit there and rest. Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately, shit's not going away unless you decide to do something about it. So I, well, I really don't well, like same. that. Yeah. I like that. All right. Cool. <laughs> just rest. Don't just rest. Yeah, don't, don't, just don't, rest. don't do don't it. Don't just rest. Yeah. Don't sit there like a slob. Just yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's do something. Do something. Yeah. And it, don't, you don't even have to exhaust yourself. Yeah. But you should be doing something to make yourself better. That's okay. it. Learning how to breathe better. Yes. That, actually, <laughs> that's huge. That can change lives. I, I agree. It really does. Awesome, Doc. Well, yeah, thank yeah. you so much for Absolutely, spending the time uh, with me today and providing some great material for our listeners to uh, yeah, for sure. take away. Um, I like it. Yeah. All right. I don't have anything else for you. I so like it. No, I'll let you go. For sure. uh, again, thank you for coming on. And uh, if you listen to this uh, podcast, please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, really. Yeah. Um, Say hi. Yeah. You know. Tell tell someone close to you you love them. All that good stuff. Yeah. And I uh, hope you are enjoying quarantine. We're in it for a little bit longer, unfortunately. For sure. Yeah. Who uh, knows what's next? Yeah. So thank you so much, and uh, see you later.